In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Adobe After Effects' 3D features with an easy to follow After Effects 3D tutorial. Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for a bonus tip. All right, so if you've watched my other two After Effects videos, you know that Adobe After Effects isn't as hard as it looks. And if you haven't watched them, watch them when you're done with this video. I'll link to them in the description. All right, let's dive into Adobe After Effects 3D. Before we open After Effects, let's get organized. First, make a folder on your desktop and call it 3D Tutorial. Inside that, make another folder and call it Zero Finals. As mentioned in my other videos, I always put a zero before my Finals folder so that it pops to the top when sorting alphabetically. Now let's open After Effects. I'm working in After Effects version 23.3.0, so if yours is older or newer, it might look slightly different. Okay, so once After Effects has loaded, click on New Project. And before we start working, let's save your project to the folder that we just created on your desktop by going to File, Save As, Save As, and call your project 3D Tutorial. And navigate to the 3D Tutorial folder on your desktop. Hit Save. So for the first part of this exercise, let's create a new composition for you to put your first text layer in by going to Composition, New Composition, and let's pretend that you're going to be using this animation for a video that was shot in 4K at 24 frames per second. So I'd like you to select the UHD 4K 23976 preset from the drop-down menu. Now you can see your dimensions are 3840 by 2160, which is 4K, and your frame rate is 23976, which is 24 frames per second. Let's assume your final animation is going to be around 10 seconds long. So down here, change the duration to 10 seconds. And lastly, give your composition a name up here at the top. Let's call it 3D Name. By the way, if you accidentally clicked off of it and you're wondering how to rename an item in After Effects, you have to click on the icon, then hit Return to rename it. Then you'll see the text area turn blue. Hit OK, and now you see your 3D Name composition in your project window. I always stress keeping your projects and drives organized so that you don't waste time looking for stuff. So let's organize your project right now by clicking the folder down here to make a folder to keep your compositions in. Call it zero comps so that it rises to the top when you sort alphabetically. Now make another folder for your footage by clicking the folder icon and naming it footage. Lastly, let's move your 3D name comp into your zero comps folder. All right, expand your zero comps folder and double click your 3D name comp to bring it down to the timeline. So for this exercise, we're going to create three layers of text, each with your name on it, one white, one red, and one blue. Let's create the first layer with your name on it. Since we're working with text for this exercise, I'm going to have you turn on your title safety overlay, which you should always have on when you're working with text to make sure that it's visible and not getting cut off on TV sets. So go to this little icon here in the lower right of your canvas and select Title Action Safe. The outer box is Action Safe and the inner box is Title Safe. Keep all of your text within the inner box. To create some text, click the text tool, which is the letter T in the upper left of your workspace, and click in the middle of your canvas here and type your name. Highlight your name and choose a font that you like in the character palette. If your character palette isn't open, you can access it by going to Window and making sure there's a check mark by character. I'll choose this font. Then in the same character palette, choose a blue that you like by clicking on this color box here. I'll choose this one. Let's center it roughly by choosing the Move tool here and pulling your name to the center. Okay, hit Command S to save your work. All right, now we're going to create two more identical name layers by duplicating the one that you just created twice. First, rename your original by clicking down here in the timeline once on your name, then hit Enter on your keyboard to rename it and type the word blue after your name. Click off of your name once you've renamed it and then reselect it by clicking on your name. 
and hitting Command D on a Mac, Control D on a PC to duplicate your layer. Rename the duplicate, which will say blue 2, to your name and red, the same way you renamed the blue one. Click on it, hit enter, type the word red over blue 2. Then let's change the text itself to a red color by double clicking on your name red in the timeline to the right of the T. Now you'll see your text highlighted. Go to the character palette, click on the blue box, and select a red. Now your text should look red. We're going to repeat this process one last time to create a white name. So in the same way, highlight your red layer, Command D or Control D to duplicate it. Click on it and hit enter to rename to white. Double click on the layer name to select all of your text, go to the box, pick a white, and your timeline should look like this. Let's reorder our layers so it goes red, white, and blue by dragging the red layer to the top. Click on the name to drag it up. All right, now we're going to reposition each layer slightly so you can see them all. First, reveal the menus in the red layer by clicking this arrow on the layer and by transform. By the position value, click the left value here and drag it to the left so your red name moves to the left a little. Move it just a little so you see it on the left. All right, hide the layer properties on your red layer, then click the blue layer and reveal the properties by transform as well. And slide the left value by position to the right. Now your name should look like this. All right, let's enter 3D space. To change a layer into a 3D layer, you need to click this 3D box here. Once you do this, you see that you have an X, Y, and Z axis here by position, as well as a new control handle in the canvas. Okay, let's make your two remaining layers 3D by clicking the 3D box for them as well. Now, when you're working in 3D, it's a good idea to turn on the draft 3D here in the lower right of the canvas, as well as the ground plane here so that you can see the ground relative to your object. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Once you have all the 3D boxes checked, let's move your red and your white name layer so that everything is not on the same Z space. We'll start with the red moving it towards the camera. Reveal the layer properties by clicking on the arrow on the left and the one by transform and drag the third value by position all the way on the right, the Z value to the left. Let's put it at around negative 500. You should see the red name get bigger as it moves towards you. Then let's move the blue name farther away from you by revealing the properties and dragging the Z value all the way on the right to the right. Put this value at around 500. You'll see it pop behind the white name. Okay, let's move things around so you can see what you've done. Hold down Alt or Option and drag around in your canvas to move your text in 3D. Okay, you're almost there. Now we're going to make your 3D names rotate. I'll do the red first. First, move your playhead to the top of your timeline, and on each layer, click the stopwatch by the Y rotation value to set your first keyframe. I'll do the red first, then the white, and then the blue. Then move your playhead to the 4 second mark on your timeline. And we're going to set a second keyframe for each of the Y rotation values. By changing the value on the left here to 1, we're telling it to rotate the layer once on the Y axis in 4 seconds. And we're going to do the same for the white. And the red. All right, let's move the playhead to the top to see what you've got. Congrats! You made your first 3D composition in After Effects. Let's export it by first selecting your render area, grab the end of the lower bar here and drag it back to the 4 second mark, hold shift so it snaps to 4 seconds, then go to export, add to render queue, and when your render queue opens up, keep it at best settings and high quality, and click on not yet specified by output to give your file a name. Call it Spinning Names and navigate to your Zero Finals folder. Hit Save and Render, and once you hear the chime, hit Command S to save your project and Command Q to quit. 
All right, you made it. Let's do that tip. When working in After Effects, sometimes your workspace gets a little messy. Did you know that you can save a workspace layout so that when things are a mess, you can clean it up with a single click? It's called custom workspaces. And just like Adobe Premiere and Adobe Photoshop, you can create a custom workspace in Adobe After Effects. Just close all the panels that you never use, arrange the ones that you do use, and go to Window, Workspace, Save as New Workspace, and call it your name. Now when things get messy, you can just go up to Window, Workspace, and scroll down to your name, and everything will pop back to right where you like it. Sweet. All right, as always, if you found any of this to be helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time.